Okay, here we are, post-trib moment number 50. Praise the Lord, I only got 10 more of these ridiculous bunch of nonsense things to watch and refute. I mean, it's just like shooting fish in a barrel. It's so easy to refute this little liar. But uh, it's just, it's so disgusting to think that people are actually being deceived by this guy. You know, it just shows how most people don't, just don't know the Bible. It's pretty bad. Today I want to talk about the blessed hope. A uh, scripture that pre-tribulation rapture believers will often turn to is Titus uh, chapter 2 verse 13 where the Bible says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And many will point to this and say, see right there, the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Christ are two different things. Uh, no, they're not. It's the same thing. The blessed hope is that the bride of Christ is called out before God's outpouring of judgment and wrath. Okay, beginning with the first seal. All right, the Antichrist being unleashed is not some kind of, oh, that's not really God's judgment or wrath. I mean, give me a break. That's what these little liars like this try to teach. Okay, God's judgment and wrath begins with the first seal. And the body of Christ is very clearly in heaven before then. And I've covered that in other studies. I'm not going to get into it now. But it's not two different events. Okay, and the, and the uh, glorious appearing of our God and the, okay, let me get the exact wording here. Okay, Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, you can see here this is one event. This is the rapture. And you say, oh no, it's the, it's, it's the uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. This part here is the second coming. It is not. When we go up there to meet the Lord in the, in the air, when we go up to the clouds to meet the, the dead and living saints joined, and then we meet the Lord in the air, which is what's taught in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to be meeting Jesus Christ, and that's going to be his glorious appearing to the saints. That's what's being spoken about here. This is not the second coming. So again, this video is a, just a non-video, but we'll continue because they say and means that they're two different things. Well, no, we don't. That just shows a misunderstanding of the word and in the Bible. Because the word and in the Bible is often used to mention the same thing twice. Let me give you an example. Yeah, let's Lord skip Jesus forward. Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Revelation 1, it's yeah. referring to the same person. So when the Bible says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, those are both the same thing. Yeah. That's obvious. I don't teach that it's two different things. The glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. Uh, just a, a simple understanding of the grammar of that sentence can tell you that. But not only that, sometimes the pre-tribulation crowd will look at that verse that says, looking for that blessed hope, <coughs> to say that means it can happen at any moment. I mean, if we're looking for the blessed hope, that means it can happen at any moment. And some people say, you know, you're looking for the Antichrist, but we're looking for the blessed hope. Yeah, he said that in one of the earlier videos. He said the next one to appear is the Antichrist. Jesus Christ is not coming back for you know until the Antichrist shows up first. He admits that freely. But you see, the fact that we're looking for the blessed hope does not mean that it can happen at any moment. Let me prove that to you. Yes, it does. In Second Peter chapter three, we see the exact same wording in verse twelve when the Bible. Oh, we see the exact. Same wording, Second Peter chapter three, in verse twelve. Lord, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. This is the second coming. No, that's at the end of the millennium. This guy has no idea what he is saying. Where does it say? Let me see how I could do this. Um, okay, here I have it. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. He said it's the same wording. Coming of the day of God. The great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. The, the excuse me, the glorious appearing of the great God. The coming of the day of God. It's not the same wording. He lied to you. Let me just back it up just a minute here and, and let him do that again. Does not mean that it can happen at any moment. Let me prove that to you. 
In 2 Peter chapter 3, we see the exact same wording in verse 12 when the Bible says, We see the exact same wording. Look at it. Read it. The coming of the day of God. The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the exact same wording. Wow, isn't that amazing? Apparently, Steve Anderson can't read English. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Let me read for you verse number 10. It says in 2 Peter 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So, Did you see anything saying the exact same wording? It's what he said. He said it's the exact same wording. Read. Read. It's not the exact same wording. The coming of the day of God. It's not the same wording. And he's talking about the millennial kingdom. The end of the millennial kingdom. This has nothing to do with the second coming of Jesus Christ. This guy's a lunatic. The Bible there says that we're looking for the day of the Lord. We're looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. Now let me ask you this. Can the day of the Lord or the day of God happen at any moment? No. The Bible says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. We know that... Okay, the day of the Lord again, just to reiterate here, is a thousand year millennial kingdom. It starts with a second coming and ends there in Second Peter. Okay, it has nothing to do with the rapture. Not one thing. The day of the Lord is not going to happen at any moment. It has to happen after other things happen. Well, yeah. the Bible still says we're looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. But you see, those who believe in a preacher of rapture, if they were going to be consistent, they would say that looking for and hasting unto, that means it can happen any day now. But we know that these events can't happen any day now. You see what he's doing? You see how he's lying? He takes a clear passage about the rapture that doesn't even resemble what's going on here in Second Peter chapter 3. This is about the end of the millennial kingdom. Okay? This is about the rapture. Read it. It's not the exact same wording. He is a liar. It's just so incredible. And so why do we think that the blessed hope is going to happen any day now? When Matthew 24 clearly states that it's going to happen after the tribulation. When the Bible says after the tribulation, Christ will come in the clouds and the trumpet will sound. Okay. I'll tell you what little smarty pants here. I'll tell you what, why don't you show us in Matthew chapter 24 where the heavens will be on fire, being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Why don't you show us that in Matthew chapter 24 if that's what's going on here? You dirty foul-mouthed little liar. And so the scripture in Titus 2 that says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ does not prove a pre-trib rapture or... Yes, it does. ...imminence for that matter. Because yes, it does. As Jesus Christ cannot come at any moment... Yes, he can. And yes, he will. He will come after the tribulation in the... Yeah, with the saints. He will come with the saints. That's correct. He comes back at the second coming. But the saints have to go to heaven before they come down with him at the second coming. Duh. Clouds. And we're looking for it, but we're also looking for the day of the Lord. We also look for new heavens and a new earth. New heavens and a new earth aren't coming until after the millennium. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there. But you just quoted the passage in Second Peter chapter 3 and said it's the second coming. But now he just said, oh no, it's, it's, it's the end of millennium. Yeah. And so don't be confused by that term looking for. Yeah, don't be confused. You know, don't watch this idiot. For or looking unto. And don't be confused by people who uh, don't understand that the word and often in the Bible refers to two of the same thing, not two different things. What a fool. I'm sorry. This guy, I mean, there, there's just no nice way for me to talk about this guy. He's so, just so blinded.